best ice cream, only with a lot less calories. And it's 93% fat-free and all natural besides. I don't know how they did that, but like I've always said, where there's a will, there's a way. You are watching WCCO Television, Minneapolis, St. Paul. All today's news with Mike Walcher, Debbie Ely, Dr. Walt Lyons has weather, Tom Hanneman has sports. And now, this is the 10 p.m. report. Good evening, everyone. A Northwest Airlines DC-9 crashed on takeoff tonight in Detroit. Flight 255 had at least 141 passengers on board and a crew of five. The plane was to have flown from Detroit to Phoenix. It would not have stopped here in the Twin Cities. Now these are the first pictures from the scene of the crash. The plane attempted to take off just before 8 o'clock Twin Cities time tonight. But witnesses said it appeared to have trouble gaining altitude. Then it hit a highway overpass and at least one car. Witnesses say the plane was on fire as it crashed near the Detroit Metropolitan Airport. As you can see, there are plenty of rescue squads on the scene. We still have received no firm word about casualties. One witness, however, said there were bodies scattered everywhere and parts of the plane strewn over a half mile. There are also reports that at least one person, possibly more, survived the crash. Michigan State Police have closed eastbound Interstate 94 and I-275 near the Detroit Metropolitan Airport where a Northwest DC-9 crashed a couple of hours ago. Mike, I know you were monitoring the Detroit station on the network line this evening. There has been some talk about at least one survivor. Yes, we understand from uh, station WJBK in Detroit that one person was taken to a hospital in Wayne, Michigan. It's not clear whether that person was a passenger on board the plane or someone on the ground who was injured when the plane went down. However, one person, a woman, was taken to a hospital. No other people, though, have been taken to local hospitals, according to the CBS affiliate in Detroit. And it's interesting, too, in watching the news wires tonight, people on the ground are very insistent that they did see a fire on that plane. We were working the phones over the last uh, hour, talking to people at uh, the Detroit airport. I talked to several police agencies and also some other rent-a-car places at the airport, very near where the plane went down. And one woman from uh, National Rent-a-Car at the airport there said, yes, the plane was on fire as it went down. The woman was extremely shaken. She would say very little more than that, but she did confirm that the plane was on fire as it went down. And if we get more information during the course of this newscast, we'll pass it along to you. Yes. One person remains in critical condition in a Duluth hospital after a plane crash last night in Solon Springs, Wisconsin. The plane crash killed the pilot and another passenger. The plane went down shortly after takeoff from the Solon Springs airport. It is not known what caused the crash, but the Federal Aviation Administration plans to investigate. The names of the victims have not been released, but they are believed to be from the Shell Lake, Wisconsin area. Damage is still being assessed from the tornado that ripped through Eagle Lake in west central Minnesota last night. 47-year-old Denton Anderson of Carver was killed in the twister. His wife and two sons were injured. The Chaska High School teacher was vacationing on Eagle Lake near Fergus Falls when the tornado destroyed their cabin. Terry Sater reports. Denton Anderson died here died trying to shelter his family from twisting winds that shredded his father-in-law's lake home. Worse than I had imagined. I, imagined. I knew it was all gone, but I didn't think it looked like this. Today, 15-year-old Denise Anderson quietly searched through the aftermath of the storm that killed her father. Somewhere in the debris are memories of happier times. Jim Merton says it's a miracle Denise escaped the storm uninjured. She was visiting at Merton's home when the tornado hit. And she said that the truck lifted up off the ground as she got nervous and she'd come around this way. And thank goodness she didn't come this way. Merton says his family had little warning. The boat flew up over the house, and then the walls came in. The daughter and I were trapped underneath uh, that wall there, and, and my little guy was, the glass blew out of the, uh, the sliding glass doors, and miraculously he wasn't hurt. Brad Burgum was staying just a few homes away from the Mertons. It just came like uh, you see a tidal wave and just and that's it. Came so quick the last I remember we got in my hand went through the storm doors I was trying to hold it and glass came and broke. The refrigerator fell on top of me and a wall fell on top of me. I just lifted up the wall in the refrigerator and climbed out. Down the shoreline, Eileen and Cliff Moulton were also caught off guard. 
tried to close the window, but it wouldn't budge, and then all kinds of debris was coming through, so I got in one of the closets because, you know, I was being hit all over, and uh, a second later, I looked out and looked at the sky, and my wife said, uh, uh, Cliff, I'm, uh, I'm cut bad from glass. Moulton's wife lost a lot of blood and is hospitalized, and Ray Besky says tonight, all he's going to do is... Hope and pray. The Beskys say they doubt they'll rebuild their lake home because the bitter memories from the storm will make it hard to come back here for peace and quiet. With Bill Kruskop, Terry Sater, WCCO Television News, Eagle Lake. Diane Anderson is in critical condition tonight at Lake Region Hospital in Fergus Falls. Her two sons are in stable condition and Eileen Moulton of Battle Lake is in stable condition. A traffic accident has killed a 37-year-old man from Cedar Falls, Iowa. Gary Soroka died when the car he rode in struck a guardrail, stopped, and was hit by a semi on I-35 in Burnsville. The car's driver escaped from the vehicle before the collision. As for the semi driver, he was treated and released from a local hospital. The U.S. warship, the Guadalcanal, is anchored off the coast of Bahrain tonight. The ship said to be carrying eight minesweeping helicopters and hundreds of Marines. This comes as Iran issues new warnings that it can destroy Western fleets in the Persian Gulf. Iran has promised to sow mines like seeds. And today, Arab sharpshooters reported that they detonated two more mines in the Gulf of Oman. Yesterday, a supply ship owned by the United Arab Emirates Company hit a mine and exploded in the Gulf of Oman. Surfers and swimmers are being warned to stay out of the Pacific Ocean near Redwood City, California, after a great white shark chewed up a surfboard and injured a man there. 41-year-old Craig Rogers suffered a cut hand when a shark bit into his board as he was waiting for a wave. It occurred 30 miles south of San Francisco. Sheriff's deputies in San Mateo County say it was most likely a great white shark that bit into that surfboard. Coming up next, the harmonic convergence is celebrated around the world. Will it bring harmony? And fans, remember Elvis Presley on the 10th anniversary of his death. Stay with us. I'm here to help. But masked men, we always use regular. There comes a time when even regular folks must turn to silver. But why silver? I don't know, ma'am, but I don't have to. My car knows. For better performance than regular unleaded, dry pure Amico silver. And we didn't even get to thank him. Neither did our car. Well, silver! Away! It's hit. Chevy Mania at Twin Cities Area Chevy Team Dealer. A saving storm of Chevy value. 1987 Chevy S10 Blazer 4x4, just $11,993. A 4x4 under 12000 You get 43 features. Headed glass, dual mirrors, power brakes, full instrumentation cluster. 87 Blazer 4x4, $11,993. Chevy Mania. This week and only at your Twin Cities Area Chevy Team Dealer. Now, take advantage of just announced one nine APR or cash rebates. Free recliners at Wix. Choose your style and your price and get a matching recliner free. Comfort Plus Recliner, $399.99. The Wall Hugger, $499.99. Triple Back Wall Saver, $599.99. The Luxury Wall Saver, $699.99. Buy one, get one free. And no payments or finance charges till November with a Wix charge. Wix, surprisingly Wix. They're coming to McDonald's by skateboard, by canoe, even by teeter-totter. To get the most wanted mug in America. Can you blame them? It's Garfield on four colorful glass mugs. Just the thing for when company drops in. You get a different mug each week for just 69 cents with any McDonald's food purchase. Listen to the man. This is important. This summer, McDonald's is serving up four Garfield mugs. Some, some, summertime, serving up summertime. And the living is easy, right, Odie? At McDonald's. <laughs> You know, it's almost like a religious experience. It's not something you can explain. You either feel that way or you don't. We were with him when he started, and we were with him at the end, and we'll be with him later on. Those were the sentiments last night when thousands of Elvis Presley fans filed past his grave in Memphis. Today is the 10th anniversary of the rock legend's death from heart disease. Over the past week, more than 50,000 fans paid tribute to Elvis Presley at Graceland. And locally, musician Danny James performed his tribute to Elvis Presley in front of about 50 fans at Moundsview Square Shopping Mall tonight. 
Donations were given to the Jerry Lewis fight against muscular dystrophy. Others observe the harmonic convergence today, a date they say marks the turning point of the world's future. From Niagara Falls to the pyramids of Egypt, people pondered whether we are headed for a century of death and destruction or peace and prosperity. A California art historian who developed the idea of harmonic convergence says people can choose which path we take. He bases his belief on the Aztec calendar and other ancient Indian legends. Ava Thompson reports on how local folk observe the day. For about 200 people, their harmonic convergence took place on a farm in Invergrove Heights. We call forth in love to our sacred planet now. For some, humming, chanting, and gathering in circles was not enough to make them feel really in tune. They were looking for some other sign. I like to have an alien encounter. That would be, that would be, you know, all right with me if, it, if it's going to happen. Let it happen, you know. Here, people, people here would be in tune to it. I would think. Art historian Jose Arguelles coined the phrase "harmonic convergence" almost four years ago. It refers to August 16th and 17th the time he believes the world should start preparing for the end of time or a period of peace and harmony. According to Arguelles, if enough people converge, 144,000, we won't have to worry about disaster. But even many convergers disagree with his timetable. This isn't a gloom and doom and everything's going to come to an end if we don't do something now. Uh, it's more of this is a grand opportunity for people to get together and begin to listen to one another. Many of the ceremonies held included Native American rituals. This one is supposed to ward off negative feelings. Some wonder whether these kinds of spiritual experiences can be turned into action. I don't believe it's only something you could do with your, with your spirit, but you have to actively do something politically or helping people. But it's a way to build a strength. Even though there seems to be some discord about final results, there is harmony on the hopes for this event, that it will heighten people's awareness about world peace so the aspiration never goes up in smoke. Ava Thompson, WCCO Television News, Invergrove Heights. Harmonic convergence observances will continue throughout the metro area until sundown tomorrow. I trust our weather will be harmonious. Reasonably so. Uh, we're going to have a very, very nice Monday, and uh, tonight's going to be very, very nice, so really there's no complaints. But elsewhere, it's not so nice. Songs to sing along with. From the Light FM, FM 103, WLTE. Listen to the Light FM at work all day. At home to take it easy. In the car to unwind. At night and on weekends to relax with the family and friends. Here's how we do it. No boring sleepy strings. No elevator music. No blasts of rock. Just hour after hour of songs to sing along with. On the Light FM 103, WLTE. You know, golden plump chickens taste better because the folks in St. Cloud, Minnesota, feed them better. Fact is, they eat better than most people, including Emmett here, who eats most anything. But our birds eat a special diet of corn, vitamins, and minerals. No hormones, nothing artificial. So to eat as well as a golden plump chicken, you've got to eat golden plump chicken. Raised by Minnesotans the best way we know how. RVs 88, only at Spickler's. 88 motorhomes, travel trailers, and fifth wheels. Now at limited introductory prices with unbelievable special volume discounts. But don't wait, there's less than 100 units at these once only 88 introductory prices. Spickler's is Minnesota, Wisconsin's largest RV dealer. But hurry, at these special limited introductory prices for 88, even at Spickler's when they're gone, they're gone. Spickler's, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. He's insane. A pervert. Insatiable. And very British. Not a lot of people know that. Tonight on Channel 4. The music was a big draw on the West Bank of Minneapolis today. The annual Cedar Fest lured crowds to celebrate the cultural diversity of this area. Organizers also touted what they're calling the largest walking guitar ensemble anywhere in the world. And they had a pretty nice day.
like that'd be hard, strumming your guitar and walking down the road at the mm -hmm. same time. Can you walk and chew gum? <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> well, how about the weather, Walt? Oh, how about the weather? Wasn't it nice? It well, was nice. it was nice later in the day. Yeah, it got better as the day was. Well, that cold front as it moved east, things got better and better. Cold front, hmm, cold. We haven't used that word a lot. You know, if you really start looking for it, you can see signs of autumn. Very small ones, but our high temperature average has dropped one degree, the low temperature down three degrees. You can actually find some leaves starting to turn a little yellow on some of the earliest trees. And more importantly, we've lost 46 minutes on sunset, and sunrise is now 51 minutes later, almost an hour and a half of daylight less. And it's starting to show up in some of the temperature charts. This morning, from pretty chilly temperatures out west, 36 at Jackson, Wyoming, 37 at uh, Klamath and Oregon, and uh, there was even snow. <laughs> yes, four inches in the higher elevations of the Wyoming mountains. And here is a cold front that is the leading edge of, well, by the time it gets here, it'll be cooler air and drier air. That's the important thing. But this has been a very uh, pesky front. Can you find the front on the satellite picture? Quiz over. I mean, there it is. It stretches from Ontario all the way down to Mexico. Nasty, nasty weather. The same system that caused the, the, the fatal tornadoes near Fergus Falls last night. It is acting up again. Tornado watches are out through this entire region. As you can see, over the last few hours, just an explosive growth of thunderstorms. 68 mile an hour winds in portions of eastern Iowa. Two inches of rain in 30 minutes in Madison, Wisconsin. And this line has been moving well, right into the Chicago area. Also, a severe thunderstorm watches up for portions of Michigan. There is some question whether or not that plane crash could have been weather-related. Uh, certainly, Chicago was no place to be flying. They had around 5,000 lightning strokes and 2 to 3 inches of rain through this area, an area where they're just recovering now from the flash floods of last weekend. Looking at the Detroit radar, not too long after the plane went down there, there are thunderstorms in the area, but at least at the moment, there's no indication that weather was a factor in this plane crash. So we'll keep you tuned to that if something develops. Uh, rain, well, there's plenty of it. We expect uh, tonight and tomorrow this whole rainfall area will just continue to move eastwards, and we're going to go into basically dry conditions. Not totally. There's going to be a few stray showers around tomorrow, but all in all, it's going to be nice. Uh, 80 degrees was the high today. 68 was the low last night. 67 hundredths of an inch fell during the nighttime hours. We've got about 1.4 inches, though, in downtown Minneapolis. Highs today, well... Look at this. Uh, you can see record highs throughout this region. 94 at South Bend was typical, but boy, it gets cooler as you go behind that front. It was in the, actually in the 50s. At minus 59 was their high today. So on Monday, the front will push further east. We will have a little trough, as we call it. It's just sort of a weakness in the pressure field that will spread some clouds and some isolated scattered showers over Minnesota. So it's not going to be one of those crystal blue sky days. There will be puffy clouds and one or two stray showers. Highs tomorrow, 60s, 70s, and 80s through... Um, our region, which will be about the same as it was today, and it will be pleasant. And a beautiful sunset view, and it's clear right now. 69 is the temperature, the dew point down to 59, very sleepable. 70% is the humidity, the winds northwest at 8, around 2978 and on the rise. For the remainder of tonight, just keep it fair or clear, whatever you prefer. 57 degrees for low, light northwest winds. And tomorrow, basically nice day, but there will be some clouds at times, and there will be a few scattered thunder showers, maybe one chance of four of anyone spot getting one. 77 for high with rather breezy northwest wind. Partly cloudy tomorrow night, low about 55. And then Tuesday, partly cloudy, a few scattered thunder showers around 78 degrees. Again, a fairly nice day on the whole, and the rest of the week will be that kind of pattern. We're going to stay in the more Canadian air mass. Temperatures will start to rise a little bit towards week's end, and it'll get a little bit more like what we had last week, but hopefully not as much as what we had last week, because that was too much. I agree. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Local athletes, both professional and amateur, came out to raise money to fight multiple sclerosis. And they did so at the urging of a fellow athlete, Dino Cicerelli of the North Stars. Hundreds of people joined Dino to fish for trout today and play volleyball. It was the Cicerelli Family Fun Day, held in Forest Lake. Tony Parker in uh, tonight for Tom Hanneman, and you get to talk about lots of good things for the twins. Yeah, the twins uh, went to the double. They had the double machine working today. Bang, bang, bang. It was over in the first inning. We'll tell you about it in just a minute. This October, join WCCO Television and Holiday Travel in California. See San Francisco, Los Angeles, and in San Diego, we'll relax at the tropical Hanalei Hotel. We'll enjoy dinner and a show during our stay at Lawrence Welk Village. Eight-day tours depart either October 1st or 29th. 
for your free brochure. Call the WCCO California hotline weekdays 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. 1-800-826-2266. Come away with me, Lucille, in my merry Oldsmobile. That goes back a long way, and so do I. And so does Oldsmobile. They just turned 90, and they're having this terrific 90th anniversary celebration. And now you can celebrate with 1.9 APR GMAC financing, or up to $1,000 cash back from Oldsmobile. Thanks, Lucille. It's an opportunity that comes once in a lifetime. In my case, maybe twice, or even three times. See your Olds dealer now. Be at the Dome Saturday, August 22nd, as we kick off our home schedule with a preseason game against the Indianapolis Colts. Get your first look at the Vikings as we gear up for what should be an exciting season. Come to the Dome and enjoy Vikings football. Call Dayton's at 375-2987 or the Vikings ticket office at 333-8828 and reserve your seats now for the Vikings preseason action against the Indianapolis Colts. Tickets are selling fast, so call now. Mm. Now this is my kind of ice cream. Real smooth, you know? You'll never catch me eating any of that frozen yogurt. <laughs> Surprise, it's YoPlay. New YoPlay soft frozen yogurt. <laughs> Not ice cream. Ice cream. Say ice cream. Ice cream. You got it right. Surprise, it's YoPlay. New YoPlay soft frozen yogurt. Brakes might not have been there early, but they're sure here now, and, uh, uh, you know, it just makes all the difference in the world. It looked like it was going to be easy for you after the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice when you win? Anything goes, right? That's right. They if you had lost, smile. bam, right in the mouth, oh, right? No. <laughs> but the Twins won. The Twins continue to pound on their West Division foes, making it 8 out of 10 in the current homestand in the Metrodome with a 5-1 win over Seattle today. The win kept the Twins four games ahead of second place Oakland and moved them five and a half ahead of California. The Twins struck early again today, getting three runs in the first while smacking three of their near record six doubles in the game. There were three doubles in the bottom of the first inning. Lombardozzi got the first one, then Gary Gaetti here got the other, driving in Lombo and Herbeck would reach base in a walk. It was Gaetti's 10th game winning hit, giving him the club lead in that department. The G-man scored minutes later when Gene Larkin hit a mirror smash down the right field line that was also good for two bases. After that, the Twins left it pretty much up to Viola, Viola until the eighth inning. Viola went eight innings, allowing just five hits, striking out five to get his 14th win, his 13th win in his last 16 decisions. Viola got good support. Watch Steve Lombardozzi here make the highlight film with his twisting, reaching, diving catch that was ticketed for extra bases. Gaddy doubled again, leading off the bottom of the eighth. He advanced the third on infield ground out and scored when Tom Brunanski here hit the sixth double of the game, one short of the team record. That made it 5-1 to one Twins. When Viola gave up a leadoff single in the ninth, Reardon came on, his first pitch a comebacker here that will hit him, but deflect right to Gagne, who turns it into a double play. Reardon struck out the final Seattle batter. In tomorrow night's finale in the Dome, Les Straker faces Seattle's league strikeout leader, Mark Langston. Gary Gaddy talked to us about fast starts tonight. <laughs> but uh, it's nice to get the home crowd into the game and to maybe take some of the tension off of the, the pressure off of our own pitcher. I think that's what's important. All right, let's take a look now at the American League. Oakland beat California 9-6. to Detroit topped Kansas City 10-6. to Toronto over the White Sox. Cleveland shut out New York. Boston 12, Texas 2. Milwaukee beat Baltimore by the score of 6-2. to Steve Andavaros made a mistake on this pitch, and the Angels' Jack Howell converted it into the third home run of the inning. The A's, though, got the last laugh as we say they came back for a 9-6 win. Paul Molitor's picture may be a permanent picture when he returns to County Stadium in Milwaukee. He extended his hitting streak to 31 games with this opposite field double today. The Brewers knocked off the Orioles 6-2. Taking a look now at the National League scores, Philadelphia over St. Louis, and look at that New York-Chicago score. They got more points than the Bears and the Dolphins tonight. Montreal beat Pittsburgh 10 to 7. Cincinnati 2, San Diego nothing in 10 innings. San Francisco just got by the Dodgers. And Houston beat Atlanta 6 to 2. Well, Soldier Field may be the football field in Chicago, but Wrigley provides football-like scores. Darryl Strawberry had four hits and five RBIs as the Mets beat the Cubbies by two touchdowns, 23-10. And you know when it rains, it pours. 
Jim Raines poured all over Pittsburgh today. He hit for the cycle with a five-hit performance. The Expos sweep the Bucks and move to win three and a half games of St. Louis. Well, with the problems surrounding the Cuban delegation, you really can't call the Pan Am games a harmonic convergence, although it should be. Carl Lewis, for one, felt some positive vibes today at Indianapolis. He won the long jump gold on the strength of a 28-foot, eight-and-a-half-inch effort. He was disappointed that he couldn't break the record of 29-2. But the way he goes, he's bound to do it someday. And a handoff to Carl Lewis. Cuba now is challenging for the lead. It's Carl Lewis of Cuba. Carl Lewis of the United States and Andre Simon. And Lewis is going to win. And second place will go to Cuba. Well, Carl Lewis is not the only great American athlete in the Pan Am Games. Greg Louganis set a Pan Am record with 695 points in the 10-meter diving. He hit a third straight Pan American gold, also a record. Well, an eagle on the links is usually quite a bit to a golfer, and to John Cook, he was worth 180 grand. Cook drained this eagle putt on 17 in the International Golf Tournament today. In a unique scoring, an eagle is worth five points. This shot Cook into a first-place lead, where he stayed and he finished up with 11 points. Well, there was a horse exhibition of a different color today at Canterbury Downs. The $20,000 Grand Prix. 24 riders and horses from all over the U.S. taking part in the event, one of many leading up to the 88 Olympics. Judging is based on speed and accuracy. 23-year-old Ellen Van Dyke of Milwaukee here rode a 13-year-old Dutch warm-blood mare to victory. The top riders go on to the equestrian team screening trials. But you know, there's nothing funny about the way Bernie Bernstein drives his funny car. Just ask John Force. Bernstein beat Force to win the Quaker State North Star Nationals today at BIR. Daryl uh, uh, Darryl Gwynn took the top five glass, a class, and the pro stock was won by Bruce Allen. And in football tonight, the NFL, it was the Chicago Bears 10 and the Dolphins uh, 3 in the uh, dedication of Joe Robbie Stadium in, Milwa in Miami. Beautiful stadium down there, yes, right? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you, Tony. And we'll be back in just a moment. Perkins introduces five new basket dinners. If you like staying informed with the latest news, weather, and information, and also like music from soft rock to jazz, then please join me, Denny Long, tonight on CCO Radio. Now, it's Mazda's final 87 model clearance. Get $1,000 worth of options free from Mazda, or $1,000 cash back from Mazda on all Mazda cars and trucks on every 87323, 626. RX-7, and truck in stock. It's your choice. A thousand worth of options free or a thousand cash back. Use cash back toward your down payment or get a check from Mazda. Hurry. Mazda's final 87 clearance ends soon. We now have word on at least one Minnesotan who was injured by that plane crash tonight in Detroit. A Detroit television station is reporting that a woman from suburban New Hope was in a vehicle on the highway and was injured when that plane crashed on takeoff about 7.45 Twin Cities time tonight. The woman was among three people in one vehicle taken to a local hospital after the crash. The CBS affiliate station in Detroit is now reporting that a yellow blazer type vehicle was hit by the plane as well and that two people were trapped for a time. Again, to recap this story, Northwest Airlines Flight 255 out of Detroit, headed nonstop for Phoenix, Arizona, crashed tonight on takeoff. There were reportedly 141 passengers on board, and we believe a crew of five. Witnesses say that parts of the plane were scattered for half a mile. We still have no firm word about casualties. Northwest Airlines officials in Egan are scheduled to make a statement sometime tonight. We'll bring you details on that on our newscast tomorrow. Officials say that a four-year-old girl with serious burns apparently was the only person to survive the airline crash of the Northwest DC-9 on takeoff tonight from Detroit Metropolitan Airport. So join us tomorrow for the latest on that. Good night.
The Channel 4 editorial on the need for a new park at Lake Minnetonka. On him. Notice, if you will, how at City Lakes, the entire shoreline is open to the public. Everyone is welcome. While at suburban Lake Minnetonka, nearly the opposite is true. On these shores, privacy is the general rule. The difference in circumstance, of course, is that the city lakes are surrounded by parks because years ago, someone with great vision set land aside for public use and enjoyment. Yet even those dreamers couldn't imagine the growth of population into what then was only rural countryside. So planners passed up earlier opportunities to establish a large park here before Lake Minnetonka became one of the area's most popular recreation sites. What we have instead are a couple of publicly owned islands and a few small municipal parks, like this one of just three acres in Mound. But it's not too late to correct this short-sightedness. A few large parcels of land with beautiful vistas of Lake Minnetonka have recently been identified for development of a major regional park. It's an idea we strongly endorse. The Hennepin Park Reserve District wants to purchase about 300 acres connecting Halstead and Smithtown Bays. One side is heavily forested. The other includes the lakefront property of wrestling promoter Vern Gagne, whose home would be preserved as a park facility. The new park would be small enough to add controlled lake access for only 100 boaters, yet large enough to eventually handle up to 600,000 visitors a year. The state has earmarked $6 million for the proposed Lake Minnetonka Regional Park. But its fate lies with the city of Minnetrista, which in effect has the power to veto the plan. And where not all the local officials fully appreciate the park's value and significance. We hope that opposition will fade with broadened understanding and that this long overdue park will be developed in its entirety to best preserve the magic of Lake Minnetonka for everyone and for generations to come. I'm Ron Hanberg. We offer equal time for an opposing view. Ever since your post office...